focus and realize that you can't do everything Everything. as nimble and as fast as you are as a startup. Uh, Just be very, very diligent on on being focused on the the one thing that you're very, very good at. (laughs) All right. So... Let's get started with sort of what problems your company is trying to solve for um, and, um, you know, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, a little background about your company. Sure. So, um, Avid is an IoT and data platform. Uh, we work mainly with insurance companies um, and we help insurance, traditional insurance companies to, cre- to uh, deploy new services into their customers services like elder care, home security. These services are somehow attached to IoT. We make that bridge. And once those services at, are at someone's home, someone's um, uh, business, we start collecting the data and we profile the day in the life of that household, of that person. Insurance companies then use this data to uh, better mitigate risk, create new sales opportunities, uh, of course, uh, influence their underwriting models, um, and this is also a way for them to have additional touch points into their customers. So imagine a smoke detector is running out of battery and out of the blue the insurance company tells you, hey, we, took a, we are sending you a complimentary battery. So creating a new relation uh, and protecting you more. Right. And so, so as I understand it, you are sort of the enabler for all of these uh, B2B platforms. Is that correct? Exactly. So we yeah we're completely on on the back end, and we allow for the integrations between the devices, all from all the manufacturers and services, and then the data funnel that's that's in between. Excellent. And and how did you guys get started? How did you meet? Like, what's the background story of how you guys uh, got started with this? I, I think it's a very interesting story there too. Yeah. So we um, we our company uh, we started uh, at um, uh, Techstars. Uh, Sasha was working for Techstars at the time mm-hmm. uh, and we got to pick most of Sasha's time during the Techstars program um, and it was a no-brainer. Sasha needed I was to come as to a work co-founder. With, uh, I was supposed to work with three or four companies and ended up having all of my time uh, and just focused on, on, one, on one company that was particularly demanding. And there's some story too, right? You, you started solving a different problem and pivoted along the way. So yeah. what was that like? Yeah, so uh, we started solving um, a problem for the B2C side, so a similar problem. So facing the consumer and saying, we are doing this. Uh, What we found out was that uh, the B2C brings challenges that our team is not uh, the proper team to execute. So we started to see who can we enable and we decided to pivot. Our pivoting was mostly, we kept totally the product, and we pivot the approach to the market. Um, we restructure the, the cap table with the investors. Um, we funnel all our energies into the US. Um, and this, is mo- this was mostly the, the pivoting that we did. Yeah, and to think also on on the pivot as the founders, other founders would think about pivoting. One thing that we that we did was test out it for on the enterprise on the B2B side is which would be the right vertical to really focus on. Right. Uh, and so for us there was like spending time on utilities, spending time with telcos, spending time with insurers, and and seeing like where is there really a, a product market fit. And we saw in insurance there was just a, a, a really great demand and, the, and it was a natural fit uh, as, a, as a product to enable new services and then for that, that to be the industry to focus on. Uh, so that was also part of, part of our working together, one of the things that, was, that, that we decided to focus on and just go through full, full speed. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about your, your, your founding story and I know there was a pivot involved. So what was that like and, and how did you guys arrive at, um, at yeah. the focus of Chef today? We, we pivoted in fact and uh, our pivoting was mostly about uh, how we were addressing the market. Uh, we, previously we were targeting B2C, so we were totally a B2C company. The same value proposition saying the same but directly to the end consumer. Um, and we understood this is hard. We are not the best team to do this. So we started to, um, to narrow down and understand to whom can we create value with this product. And we totally addressed um, new markets. Um, and this was mostly the, the pivoting that we did. Yeah, and so uh, one of the things, so it was 
testing it. Part of it was also testing out new markets, seeing uh, do we want to test try utilities, telcos, insurance companies. And by being able to do pilots and testing in those into those industries, we found that there was a better product market fit and a real need for, for, our, for our platform within the insurance space. And so then we just had to decide to focus and completely follow, follow that opportunity and, and just be, be dead set on doing that. Uh, and so one of the, the founder advice that we would have is to, to, to kind of have to take focus and realize that you can't do everything, everything. as nimble and as fast as you are as a startup. Uh, just be very, very diligent on, on being focused on the, on the one thing that you're very, very good at. <laughs> and, you know, obviously you're based uh, in, in Lisbon, Portugal, and, I mean, and, now, now, and you're in New York, but you, well, you spend a lot of yeah. time here. There's a lot of talent here, yeah. and uh, some years ago, the thing that we were mostly missing in Portugal it was experience on top of talent. So it was easy to find someone to design pretty cool, pretty scalable software. The problem was who has had the experience to build something for 100,000 million um, uh, people, uh, or 100 million people. Um, just a few. Uh, amount of engineers would be able to say I've done it. Now, with all the big corporates coming into the into the into Portugal, uh, all the bigger startups coming to Portugal, their research centers opening here. This is happening now. So on one side, it's becoming a little harder because you have uh, companies uh, also um, hiring in Portugal. Uh, you have talent that is even more qualified. And that is a balance that we really enjoy. Yeah, the, some of the problems that we're solving in terms of, of an engineering, uh, an engineering problem on the data side, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting and interesting for people. And so when you think about what engineers are looking for, at least what we, what we believe, it's a really interesting, it's an interesting product problem. and it's an interesting problem to solve on top of like a good culture and a happy place to be. How has your technology evolved? Like when you think about the architecture you had started out with and probably what you're dealing with today uh, yeah. might be different. So Yeah, it's so totally different that. today. So as the, on the same way that, uh, um, that we were seeing ourselves as a technology that was fitting all the industries, we also did everything in-home. So it was everything in-house developed, like federation, servers talking with servers, and it, soon we realized we cannot scale, we cannot focus on infrastructure, we cannot focus on server side. We need to develop very well all our models, how we address the data. So we started to hand over the, those components to third parties, companies like DigitalOcean. So it's really important for us, and this is again another advice that is the same as Sasha gave before, it's really important to focus where you are creating value. In terms of uh, how it evolved, yeah, it will evolve from all done internally to just we we just develop our algorithm models and our IoT platform. All the others we rely on third parties. You know, tech, other technical challenges that you anticipate and as you grow. Like, are there like what advice would you give to other budding startups who are trying to solve similar problems? Is there any any learnings along the way? Obviously, don't do it all by yourself, which yeah. is pretty good. Is there anything else that you wish you could have done? Yes. Yeah, so um, also um, on the hiring side, this is something that is something that we learned. It's really important to bring someone into the team that uh, is better than you. Yeah. Even even more if you are developing anything new, they need to bring knowledge. They are not there to follow your orders, your instructions. They are there also to learn with you, but they need to bring. Um, and especially when you have a small team like ours. Um, you really need to have everyone with something to give to, to the company. So this is another point that um, at the end of the day contributes a lot to what we bring new into the product, how we approach the, the technical problems. From a team people perspective, uh, I know you have an engineering presence um, in Lisbon, but you're starting up to build out a sales team now. Yeah. How like any advice on things that are different there or potentially yeah, things you have to do differently. Yeah, so um, going back off of what Domingo had said before, it's finding people who are better, who are who 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 know what they're doing and who are better at it. As a sometimes as a founder, you think you can do everything. This is the theme. You always think you can do everything, and you need to find people who are better than you. 
Um, and uh, and so part of our process has been really tapping into our network, tapping into a lot of the people within the insurance industry that we've been that we're selling to, and and finding out uh, finding other people who understand our product, understand the pain points of the industry that we're going into, and are able to also point out sort of where where our flaws or what we're missing. So like we were talking before, um, having someone to help us that brings expertise is key for your company when you are trying to be very, very focused. And th those uh, that expertise can come from your team that you are hiring, right. but also from your partners. And uh, the program was that for us. It was the way to get uh, deep uh, expertise in areas that we thought or that we consider this is not our core, this is something we need to, this is a tool for us. Uh, we cannot build it, we cannot spend time, uh, we, or we cannot afford to have consultant services. And this was the most significant help that we had from the, the program. How do you two allocate your time and your focus? Like, what's a typical day look like? Mm. It depends what city you're in. Um, yeah. <laughs> if I'm in New York, I probably I get up around, try and be up around five to be on the same time zone as, the, really as the team here. And so then most of the morning is like, uh, I, work, I work from home in the morning. <laughs> Five is really, really. We are very impatient with the long meetings. So we avoid meetings at, at all. If you visit uh, our office, you'll see that we don't even have a closed meeting room specifically for that, for that reason. Um, and we try to, a productive meeting needs to be under 15 minutes. We don't spend much time uh, on those meetings. Otherwise we use chat messaging or any kind of other communications to, to have things done. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sasha and Dominguez, for, for joining us and, and sharing all of your insights. Uh, congrats on the amazing traction you've, you've had and uh, can't wait to hear more um, from all the successes you guys have. Thank you for yeah, having thank us. Thank you for having us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank and you. thank you for all of the support and for the community.